First time on Off The Brawl on OffTheBall.com. A, a good friend of mine. I've known him for many a years. Uncle Creepy, uh, Mr. Ian McCall. Ian, first of all, my friend, great to have you on. How are you, my friend? Doing very good. Thank you very much for having me. Excellent. I, I'm looking forward to it. It's been too long. We, we haven't spoke since you announced your retirement. Obviously, five months retired. You're, you're obviously living it up there. Look, look at the sun in the background there in Orange County. Look at this, guys. Unbelievable. Dead inside. Like I was saying, the gym that I work at is the nicest gym around. So um, I just get to sit here and eat and hang out and drink good coffee and meet nice people and make some money. What, what are you doing exactly with the gym now, I mean, Are you heading up the MMA program there? Um, it's not MMA. It's called Mixed Combat Arts. Okay. And they, you know, we're trying to build a program. Um, but it's it's going to take a while. You know, this stuff doesn't happen overnight. This is a giant corporate company, and they're worth five and a half billion dollars, I think. Wow. So, uh, you know, it's just it's going to take time to implement it. But yes, uh, I would like to build a full MMA program, start some jujitsu for kids and adults, and kickboxing and what have you. But I just got to see which direction we want to take it. Ian, how has it been since you retired? Obviously, it's five months, I think, now since you've retired. Mentally, how have you been? Has everything been all good? Your guy is obviously you know, openly um, admitted some of your demons in the past. Is everything all good upstairs? Are you at peace with your mixed martial arts career? I am now. I wasn't at first, man. My my, my friend, J.J. Thomas, he's a was a pro snowboarder. He's Sean White's half-pipe coach. Um, he won a bronze medal for the U.S. in the Olympics um, in snowboarding. And oh, man. when he found out I was retiring, he goes, man, you know this is going to be the hardest thing you've ever done. He said, you're like me. This is all you've ever done. And he, he listed the steps it was going to take. He said, you know, you're going to go through this, you're going to go through one, two, three, four, five, whatever, and then you're going to come out as a better person on the end. He goes, I know you right now, you don't want to teach, you're over the sport. I, you know, I, I was I was jaded, I was over it, and, and I didn't know what direction to go. I was depressed, I was in bed for a while, I was just, I was, I was just, it was, retirement was the hardest thing I've ever been through, to be honest with you. And you got to think, I, all I've ever done is fight. Mm. This is, I'm 30, 34 years old, this is my first real job I've ever had. People, oh, well, fighting was a real job. No, it wasn't. It was a fantasy. It was a boyhood fantasy that I got to live from 18 to 34. Okay, that's over with. And, I, and it really took, you know, a few friends of mine kind of, kind of verbally slapping me around to go, okay, like one of my buddies, a hairstylist. He, he was supposed to be. He had two chances in the music industry. Two. Like I had a lot of friends in music. And to see someone get two chances as a, as a lead singer. When you're a degenerate, you know, drug addict, and like he threw all of it away because of drugs, yeah. and he's he's been at that pinnacle of life where, and he blew it, you know, which I, I have too. But he goes, well, how does it feel not to be the coolest guy in the room anymore? And I went, oh, you know what? Thank you. I needed that. Like I'm not I'm not the coolest guy in the room anymore. I'm fine with that. Like that's I don't want to be that guy anymore. I don't want to create the attention. And when you first retire, there's no more messages, no more text messages, phone calls, interviews. Um, spotlight travel all this stuff goes away poof especially for someone like me you know i, I did a lot of traveling yeah I mean, no, of course and I, I don't anymore and i'm, I'm happy for it because now i can now i have jobs i have more than one job uh, i'm i will finally be able to travel for 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 just a love of traveling <laughs> for once in a long time <laughs> you know the, the only the only trip i've taken over the last Besides local trips to like Lake Tahoe or something, but the only trip out of the country I've taken in the recent years for, for pleasure was was going to Costa Rica, you know, mm. to a surf camp in the middle of nowhere like that. And that was one I, I can't even count. Them. Every every trip I go on is to go. I'm sitting in the back of a car getting driven somewhere, yeah. and I know that sounds bougie and stupid, but oh, like we gotta complain. No, you just don't get to see everything I want to see. I like traveling. I like going to the ghetto and eating. I like going to dangerous parts of town. Like it's just fun for me. Have you found it? Have you found adjustments? You know, they'll always say you need to find a new drug of choice after fighting. That that adrenaline rush, that that buzz. Is is your work now that? Do you feel as though that's the case? It's very time consuming, and I get to teach other people what I love to do. That's the main thing. Um, if I can make people's life better and, and and teach them something that's beneficial for them and cool. Uh, but honestly, it's my daughter. That, yeah. that's that's what you know she's kept me in jiu-jitsu she's six she'll be seven on friday she wants to start competing in jiu-jitsu um and it really re-sparked my interest in, in jiu-jitsu was the fact that she goes wait mm. i can compete now i'm like yes she goes i can win a world title like you and yes she goes, 
want to do it together? And I said, sure. You know, so I did make her, make her a little promise, which I have to keep, um, to go win the Jiu-Jitsu world title. I had to get my black belts in gi and no gi. Is focus right now is, is Jiu-Jitsu and wrestling. But, uh, I mean, I don't... The thing is, like you said, that drug, that drug you have... That, that is fighting. That is yeah. fighting and performing in front of millions of people. I'll never find it again. And you know what? I don't want it anymore. I'm, I'm over it. I, I have... I have better drugs. I have better, you know, like my kid. Like, like I mean, sure, I'm, I am single now, but um, that just gives me more time to focus on 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 just my child and the you know the three or four jobs that I have now. Yeah, um, you said you're single again. It's, it, um, you know, obviously you were engaged. I think is, is that correct? At one point. <laughs> I was supposed to get married this year. <laughs> okay, that that was obviously hard. So it's been a tough year for Ian McCall. It hasn't been easy. Um, I, I hate to call anyone an anchor because Alicia wasn't great, made me a better person. Yeah. But yeah, broke up, it's over, I got rid of that anchor. Because now I have to just focus on, like I said, I've got three jobs. I announced all three of them last week. I, I work here full time, I'm 40 hours a week at Lifetime Fitness, you know. Um, and then I am on the board of directors for BudShader.com, which is a cannabis lifestyle website it's it's a, it's a marketplace the largest marketplace in north america canada puerto rico um over two million subscribers and some of the board of directors run their lifestyle i'm an investor in the company they actually called me a philanthropist <laughs> first time anyone called me a philanthropist and i went oh i like that okay i like that wording i'm a philanthropist now great uh and then i'm invested into another company called Elixicure, which is another cannabis brand you know that's blowing up everywhere but I set the seeds in the ground years ago, and I am the UFC's cannabis guy. Jeff Davinsky is, is my mentor of sort, uh, pushing me through this whole process and, you know, asked me to make them a product. You know, uh, and people ask me, well, you don't care about other, other people in the business hear this? I don't give a fucking fuck. Because I know that my company that I work with is so far ahead of everyone else that what does not matter? People can try and play catch up all they want. Uh, I'm the one who talks to Jeff. <laughs> I'm the one that Jeff asked, you know, asked me to make the UFC and this fighter product. Says, there's a doctor from Harvard. The day before I had my meeting with Jeff and Heather Linden, mm. the head, who had the head, Physio. Uh, Pete, yeah, at the performance too. There was a, a doctor named Leif something. I never remember his name. I should really know that. Um, he's from Harvard. He sat in front of the World Boxing Council the yearly meeting and gave a speech about the, the, the benefits of CBD and how fighters should be forced to take it after, mm. to get rid of CTE, brain damage, concussions, all that stuff. And to have someone like Jeff Davinsky Embrace it? Go, hey, I, I need you to make this for the young fighter, for old fighter, or any fighter in general. Men, women, child, doesn't matter. Uh, but actually, children can fight. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you're in the UFC, if you're in combat sports, and I can create something for you, that gave me purpose. Uh, again, I've been fighting since I was... 18 professionally i've been fighting my whole life yeah I've been fist fighting my whole life um you know i I've, I've you know everyone knows my my past it's wild and crazy i'm over it but now i have purpose because i get to build something for these young guys and and sure there's money involved mm. i'll make a lot of money great i don't i i'm i'm gonna be okay it's not yeah, about the money. It's you've about talked about this. You've talked about that for years on on the show. Um, you know the show we used to do on the talking brawls, and we spoke yeah. about you know your your involvement in, in the ca- cannabis industry, and it's something obviously you know going back a long way. You, you, you've um, been involved with Jeff Nowitzki, the UFC. What's your relationship like with them now? Because I know at one point you were potentially going to do an analyst analyst role. You went out for I think Dana White contender series, something like that. Um, is there a relationship with the UFC at all? And I know obviously you last fought for Ryzen, but is the relationship good with the UFC? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the UFC and I. Um, I mean, we're in we're in bed together of sorts for business, <laughs> you know. And I, I made that I made that happen. I'm proud of myself. The other day, I just announced last week, and I've been this has been going on for a while. But you know, I I've, I've known Dana and them since I was a teenager. Yeah. You know, when Chuck Peak was was coming up, like that's how I met everybody. So I have a different relationship, but me and Jeff, Jeff's my, he's legitimately my friend. That man has sat by my side in hospital beds in other countries, in this country, you know, he's just a genuinely good guy, and he knows that 
I'm not in this for the wrong reasons. You task me with something that makes my little world a better place, then cool. That yeah. that's all I'm about now. It's just about making this world better. And 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 again, people are like, oh, well, money. I'm like, yeah, that'll come. I need to follow my passion. I'm gonna make money at any one of my three or four jobs that I have. And I have a podcast. And I have a few other projects that are happening. You know, I've got multiple companies that are in the process of being built uh, in in that cannabis realm. You know, there's so many, so much opportunity for me here that. Again, is the analyst role something you'd like to do though? Go back, like, I'd love to do that. And, and back to that, I so I blew it. I'll, I'll be, I'll be totally <laughs> out. I, I dropped the ball. I showed up, and there was Robin Black and Alan Jablon and, and uh, a few other guys, and I didn't have any notes. No one told me what I was doing. I just showed up in a nice suit, you know. But I, my nice suit's a couple grand. <laughs> Alan's in a in a Versace suit, and he's a he's a Versace model. I'm like, you win, man. Like, okay. A little out of my depth there, and then you got Robin Black, who's yeah. so good. Uh, that's the guy I look up to. Now, I went in there, no notes, nothing. I was hungover. I went out partying the night before in Hollywood. You can't give me that much rope, okay? <laughs> I I completely blew it, and I looked so bad that day. And then I I was like, oh man. So I would like if UFC's listening, to this, I would love to, to try out again. Um, but you know what? I might not have the time. You know, I might not have time to do it anymore because I'm busy. So maybe I don't want to do it. <laughs> but that, that, that would be a fun job. It really would. Because I know I'm good at it. And I know that people would like to see me in front of the camera. But uh, I, I, like I said, I screwed up the first time, the first chance I had. So I, I would understand if they said, no, you're, you're next. Yeah. I could give him another go, Dana. Come on. Come on. <laughs> it'd be great. It'd be, yeah. be, be good I mean, to see McCall right in the booth. I, I honestly, I, I've got so much on my plate right now. I don't care. Yeah. Um, but it would be fun. Definitely. Let's move to, to obviously Demetrius Johnson, the guy you've been in there with, you know, on a, a number of occasions, and you know, fighting yeah. Brisbane. We can we can talk about. It. What are your thoughts as someone who's been in there with DJ on the whole situation with the UFC? Let him go over to one, and um, the first magnitude, you know, huge, large MMA trade in, in between the world organizations. Do you think it's the right call yeah. from the UFC? Yeah, honestly. They don't care about DJ. They made that very apparent, and it's it's you know, I. I they don't care about the fly, flyweights, as far as I'm concerned, and I think it's always been an issue. They don't, and sure now they have Henry, who is this Olympic Olympian, Olympic gold medalist at like 19, wherever he was. Yeah. Um, but again, you have a guy that's not very marketable. No one cares about Henry Cejudo, and I don't mean to say anything mean about him because he's an amazing athlete and fighter, but no one cares. And, and you're on top of it, you're an Olympic, Olympic gold medalist, and no one gives a shit. So it's it's interesting to see how that's all going to work out. Um, well, there is rumors that Henry's going to go fight TJ Dillashaw for the 135-pound title. Does that spell the end of the flyweight division? Because you actually, I think, were the one that said it to me possibly a year ago. You were the one who heard the rumor that one were actually interested in acquiring the UFC flyweight division. Do, do you think that's something... Yeah. That is a big possibility. Uh, I, I honestly, I haven't had my ear to the ground lately. Um, but that was very much talked about. It was very much talked about, and from from good reputable sources. You know, I, I, I don't I don't speak on anything unless I I have yeah more concrete stuff. And, and sure, I don't say everything like you know I don't say everything that's in, in my my little rolodex of knowledge here. But this trade was. It was good for the sport, to be honest. That's what we should be doing. We should be trading guys back and forth. And, and Ben Ashton put it really well. He said, I'm being traded for, obviously, they want me. I'm being traded for the, arguably the best mixed martial artist of all time. Yeah, I agree. And, and to have him put it out there, I was like, wow, okay, that's true. And you got you to grip the magnitude of it all. Matt Hume works for one. Yes, and he coaches Ben. Yeah, I'm sure the deal that DJ got was incredible. Just like Eddie Alvarez... I'm sure they're going to be co-promoting, so he's going to have that side of it. But DJ's not in this for the money. I think we've all we've all learned that DJ's not in this for the money. So uh, I think he'll get more respect out there. I know he will. Yeah, I agree. The Asian culture in general, Asia as a whole, will embrace him more. I mean, that that comes, people don't really understand how big One FC is. It's huge. They have a lot of money. Chat you see the Tom is a very smart man. Um, and, and runs this company incredibly well. So it, it's, it's exciting to see 
these sort of things happen in, in a sport that hasn't yet, um, you know, gravitated towards this sort of thing yet. What do you think of Ben Askren and, and his chances? I know we had a short text conversation the other night in terms of what Ben's going to bring to the UFC in that welterweight division. You know, for me, I still think there's a lot of questions to be answered for in, in regarding the level of opposition he's fought. And the welterweight division in the UFC at the moment is, is, is for me, is a, a division that's absolutely thriving. There's new guys emerging over the last year. Um, the likes yeah. of Kamara Usman, you've you Ponsonibio, you know, Darren Till's got a title shot, obviously lost, but, you know, he's going to le- learn a lot from that young guy as well. You, you've Gunnar Nelson, you've names like that all over the place, younger sort of fighters. For me, it's a big, big ask for a guy like Ben Askren and the level of opposition he's fought in terms of MMA now I'm talking about to come over and make a big big statement what are your thoughts on him and what he's going to bring to the UFC welterweight division well let's go back to the rumor mill from years ago I mean years ago rumor mill that he was toying with everybody including T-Wood including yes. The, the, yes. one of the welterweights of all time and you know they've known each other since they were children um, but that Ben just just runs roughshod over everybody in the gym. And to think that that's even a possibility over someone like Tyron, who is... It's Tyron, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, phenomenal. That, that's insane. And and I, I have seen Ben roll with Marcelo Garcia. I remember, I remember years ago watching a video on roll with Marcelo. And he looked... I mean, it's just so good. Um, I saw him in Dallas when uh, Carla lost to Ioana a while back. Yeah. And, and was just you know watching him move around uh, with like CM Punk and people like that and just he is he is funky yes he's got the funk <laughs> he always will and I love it that's I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a California wrestler at heart California wrestlers have a lot of funk um, and man the guy I think that he'll be able to contend and beat everybody to be honest I have faith and, wow. and maybe I'm I, I am riding on a high of the U S world team just won crushing it. I mean, they just smashing everybody. We have this new breed of American wrestlers, this new team. Jordan Burroughs didn't even place first. Wow. But you have all these other guys, Dake and, and, and other amazing wrestlers that uh, that have just killed it. So may, maybe that's part of it, you know, that I'm like, ah, oh, you know, he's going to wrestle everybody. But at the same time, he's got great jiu-jitsu. And how many of his last three or four fights have ended in knockout? A lot of them, anyway. Yeah, he's finished most of them, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Yeah, people want to talk, you know, trash or whatever, but whatever, let him. Yeah. No, if, it's if listen. You, you know, you I'm, can't, if you can't get up with another person on top of you and you're a fighter, you're losing. You lose that fight. I'm know? just, and I'm just disappointed in terms of what we've lost in Demetrius Johnson. I have to say. Of course. That's my gripe, and I've always, you know, in terms of the flyweight division, always got behind the flyweights because, you know, I think it's just probably one of the most technically gifted divisions in mixed martial arts. Has Dana White handled this whole situation well in terms of um, the respect towards the fighters in, in, in the division? I know you've had a you know tumultuous sort of relationship back and forth with Dana White over the years. Um, could he be doing more? Well, you know what? Me and Dana have always gotten along, but he's, you know, he's scolded me a couple times, and I deserve it. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've deserved it. I've, everything I've done, I've gotten in trouble before. I've, I've, I deserve it. Okay, but mm, you know, Dana's. I, you just all you have to do is go look at Ben Askren's Instagram. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and post everything. You know, hey boss, unblock me. Hey, look at Dana's following me. It's, it's it's hilarious. And if you know Dana as a person, which people have, people get a really deep insight into him. As a person, that's how he works. He loves this sport. He loves this company. Mm. He loves fighting. I mean, he's a fighter at, at his heart. So, people misconstrue what he does and says because he wears his heart in his sleeve. He says, you know, four letter words. And yeah, maybe whatever. not. Maybe not what he says in his actions. You know, in exactly. relation. Exactly. Yes. And I think they changed. I think they changed for the better. But some guys, you're never gonna get along with. Yeah. That, that's not changed. You're 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 a you're the head of this giant giant corporation, mm. and you're dealing with other strong-willed individuals who, who get in fistfights for a living for money. Mm. We all we want is blood money. Well, well, maybe in terms then of you know a guy like you who's now retired, and um, you know other names that retired over the last number of years. I know the sport is new, but could the promotion maybe doing something more 
to help out these fighters and adv- advise them, you know, in future career and how to conduct themselves. Because obviously, there's there's no fighter union. That's going to be a major issue for years to come. Should the UFC maybe do something a little more, go above and beyond? Yeah, and that, that's another mission line. Is trying to figure out a way to to again. I'm not. I'm not. The unions are gross to me. Mm. They're a necessary evil, but they are gross. You know, union, union workers, all the, the whole thing is very, it's very slippery slope. You have to, we have to engage with it right. But if I can provide, let's say it's through a company like Lifetime. Yeah. What if I build a program and they've got 135 gyms around the country? What if I can provide fighters with the jobs at these ultra luxurious gyms around the country? No one else does it. Go look at other sports. Look at race car driving. Surfing, snowboarding, uh, motorcycles, whatever, any any sort of action sports or regular sports in general. I mean, baseball, football, those guys do get jobs in their industry, but they make so much money they don't need to. Mm. Whereas fighters like myself, you're not making enough money where industry companies need to keep you in the game. And the thing is, we don't have any companies. There's no clothing brands. There's no... There's well, that's, barely- that's, that's because of the UFC and in many... It, it's, it's the only reason why we don't have them is because of the UFC. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm not saying anything bad. They know it. They did it themselves. But we need to start taking care of our own because exactly. when, when fighters are done, they get thrown in the gutter and, you know, you've got brain damage, you've broken body, you've got no money or maybe a little, who knows? You're still, you're, you're viewed as, as disposable. Mm. And we need to start figuring out a way to get guys jobs within the, within the, within the company or within the sports somehow. You know, and, and just being referees and being judges. Doesn't I cut get, it. There's not that many jobs there. You know, like, well, uh, we need. Uh, I, I mean, sure, I'm, I'm tasking myself with, with figuring out a way to get people more jobs and get people to, to advance this sport on a better level. You know, and take care of my kind because you guys are all I have. You understand? I'm, I'm a fighter. I'm yeah. still a fighter. You know, even though my 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 sporting career is over, now I'm I'm looking at myself as a father. Mm. You know, and I don't want to say father figure to these fighters, but you know, maybe a role model or or, or just a person that they, that they they know cares about. Them. Do you think because the MMA community then could do more and maybe reach out, like you know, maybe a, a journalist or something to a retired fighter, just check in, how you doing? Time again, because you know, you you obviously go through, as you said, a, a massive. Um, slump after you retire and you're pretty goddamn depressed I'd imagine for quite some time yeah it's hard man I, like I told you it's a, retirement was the hardest thing that I've ever been through and a lot of depression a lot of especially if you're dealing with things like brain damage yeah things and bipolar and you know episodes and all this different stuff that people go through um, and I, the, the one thing I want to say to anyone out there who's dealing with sort of issues diet Get on a high fat diet. And I mean, everyone jumps to this whole keto thing. It works, man. It makes your brain feel better. Get a lot of healthy fats in there for your brain because you need it. A lot of water, a lot of healthy fats. Um, also, if you're done fighting, there's things like peptides. Mm. Uh, it helped me feel way better. It got rid of my depression and my pain. So it's, uh, it's called B in that brain derived neutrophic factor. It's a peptide you can take that, again, it's not illegal, it's just good science. And it just protects your brain, you know. And, and there's certain things you can do on a physical level: the right supplements, the right diet, the right exercise. You got to keep exercising. When you're done, it flies everywhere. Um, you, you, you can't stop moving. we are fighters. You, know, you have to keep. You have to have a sedentary lifestyle. There's, there's a lot of lifestyle stuff that that I mean, fighters need to realize once they're done fighting. They have to keep up with, with certain things. Were the people? people- did you have someone to talk to after you finished your career? Was was there anyone there you could reach out to to to, to you know give you advice? Maybe you know Chuck, someone like that. Um, yeah, of course, you know Chuck, uh, Vinny Shorman, my mental coach. Yeah. Um, you know they these I I've, I'm different. I'm lucky. I'm spoiled. You know, I've got the right people in my life to look at and go, okay, like this is what you need to do A, B, and C if you want to get to this certain point and I had to do those and you had to have structure in your life and and you have to you have to implement really basic things that seem basic you know but they're not especially for fighting we're so used to a certain lifestyle especially if you're like me um, that's all I've ever done I, I, I don't know anything else I'm not sure I know business obviously I've, I've I've built a life for myself outside of the sport and I've been doing so for the last few years but I know I'm different 
you know, I'm always going to be all right. Mm. Like, people don't need to worry about me. I'm going to be okay. But I worry about other fighters who, you know, maybe aren't as, aren't as well-versed in business or aren't as smart. Yeah. Because make anyone feel stupid. But, you know, I'm not that smart. I'm learned. That's what it is. I'm a very learned person. I, I, I read and I write and I, I figure things out on my own because that's the analytical brain I have. But you have to be able to step back from what you were and become a new person. And, and that's... It takes time. You gotta reinvent yourself. It takes time. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, I, I got a new haircut. I got a new job. <laughs> you know, all this stuff. And, and you gotta learn to just be happy. Yeah. Because for a while, you know, it gets dark. It does get dark. You don't know what you're gonna do, where you're gonna go. Um, and, and you have to learn to just flow and just go with it. And, you know, I still have jiu-jitsu. I'm gonna compete in jiu-jitsu. So you have to have something to look forward to, at least for me. I had to go, okay, I got a goal. I have a goal with my daughter. Yeah. Win a world title in some form of jiu-jitsu. I'm sure it'll be no gi, because I'm not a good gi. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I will get my gi black. Yeah. It's just, you have to have these certain goals set up in your life. Uh, like, like, you listen to Tyson Fury on Rogan's yeah, podcast. Yeah, I did, I did. It's all goal-oriented, you know, and, and I'm, I hate to say it, but me and Tyson are, are cut from the same cloth. Yeah. You know? Doing wild, 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 degenerate things that you just yeah, no, I just sure, sure. No listen. <laughs> you you've told me some of the stories over the years, and some of them have been obviously well documented as well. In obviously, there's you know for you, there's obviously been a lot of sort of ups and downs in your career. Is there regrets there? Are you at peace with them now, or do you have to be at peace with them, or is it something that you're always going to live with for the rest of your life? Um, actually, you know what, I made peace with it. Good, but good I for you. Clear. Good for you. I mean, I, I have so many regrets. I'll be the first person to admit that. Well, let's take all the bad stuff, all the all the, the things that happened to me again, finger quotes. Um, there's still I still live them in my fault. Get sick or whatever. Uh, all these these outside things that happen to me, um, injuries, whatever it is. There's something I could have done at every turn to make those not happen. You know, uh, whether it's those things, or the injuries, or getting sick, or it, it all for me, it all falls in the same line with okay, well, don't invite your crazy ass girlfriend or ex girlfriend or wife yes. to a fight. Don't let that affect you mentally. Don't 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 let outside things or people or places or whatever affect you. Yeah. And I I let the outside world ruin me. You know, it's no one else's fault. Did yeah. you did you look at that maybe and obviously you know towards especially you know the latter part of your career, the last number of fights some of them fell out obviously you were sick things like that there was a number of incidents, was that maybe telling you you should have maybe retired a little bit sooner? Yeah, um, I tried to reinvent myself, go to Ryzen, and it had catastrophic results, uh, and it just you know I can't imagine anybody. Mm. I got cut by a rope, and then yeah. I got you know one punched by more Gucci like. You know, it, it, it's done. I, I remember, I remember walking backstage after Horiguchi hit me and thinking about how I felt in the ring after that punch. And sure, that fight should have gone a few seconds later. Most likely he would have finished me. I'll, 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 I'm fine with that. But I did get a good shot on the ref. I did get a nice deep double edge. You never know. Maybe that um, but I remember standing when the ref stood me up and I looked out cross just wherever the, the ring or the, the people total cross-eyed bambi leg was like okay this is i'm done i'm over it like i, I I've, I've got enough damage in here already and <laughs> you know as everyone knows i died of a drug overdose yeah and they didn't deploy overdose and get out that night no i was in the hospital for 10 days i was dead okay uh, i put myself in the hospital snowboarding with a head injury really bad so i need to to step back and also think that I'm a businessman. When did you have the snowboarding injury? Recently? No, I was a teenager. I was, oh, okay. I was, right. It was in high school. Right. And I, I, I had ice bird all in my whole face. Uh, I was sleeping for a couple days in the hospital. Wow. Wow. And you know, those things take a toll. So I just, before before, you know, and I, I hate to put this in this context, but you know, before I off myself, because I'm that kind of crazy. I'm that kind of stupid, where if, maybe if I had more brain damage or I had, you know, more, yeah, more brain damage, realistically, that I would 
you know, I, I have the potential to do something stupid like that. And at least I can see that and go, okay, I'm done. I'm over it. So, but you see something like that. Are you taking precautions um, talking to people and, and seeing people in relation for that not to happen? Um, well, yeah. Again, I, I have a good structure around me. I don't need to go see a doctor. I don't need to take medicine. Um, you know, uh, f- honestly, for me, my medicine is cannabis. Yeah. You know, and, and granted, I do have a stress disorder, so I do have to take some sort of uh, clonopin every once in a while, which is just for anxiety. If I have a really stressful week, i got to take it. Um, and I'm not proud of it. It's something I'm, I'm trying to stay away from because I'm, I've been getting rid of all the stressors in my life. And I, I, I man, I can't remember the last time I took Clonopin. Well, I don't think, you know, I don't think you should should be, um, you know, I think it's pretty open now. A lot of people are with, you know, sort of disorders like this and illnesses like this because, you know, mental issues are a part of everyday life now. They are. And at least we're able to talk about, especially as men, men, yeah. men who are, we're able to say, yeah, like I, I was sad. Yeah, I did cry or whatever. I did feel these ways. And how do I fix it to have people like, um, you know, Tyson Fury or maybe even myself mm. to a to help out people, again, it's it's about helping other people get better, about helping young fighters, um, you know, not have to go through the things that the rest of us have had to go through in our lives and our careers. And, and whether you're, you know, a world champion or former champion or not, doesn't, that doesn't matter. We're all the same, you know, at our at our core. We're all we're all the same sort of person. We're all fighters. So, you know, my my new. My new thing is just trying to help out my community as much as possible. Definitely. All right, a few quick fire questions um, before we let you go. And do appreciate the time, man, as always. Um, career highlight. We got. We got to ask you. Man, career highlight. That first fight with DJ was a lot of fun. Yeah, they're great fights. My life took a drastic turn after that. <laughs> my life spiraled out of control after that. That was a good highlight. You know, even though it ended so poorly, just f- being able to share that time with DJ in the cage and feel that energy and that 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 drug, like you said, was incredible. Um, so I, I'd have to say that, or or beating uh, Daryl Montague for for the the Tachi World Title. Tachi yeah, Palace. I became the best in the world in a parking lot of a Indian casino in Central California, Lemoore of all places. Yeah. Not in <laughs> but it's hollow ground for the day. I'm the man on the planet right there. So yeah, Tachi Palace fights Juicy Formiga, you Daryl Montague. The the list goes on. Some some uh, unbelievable fights back in the flyweight division before it was obviously embraced by the bigger promotions. But uh, man, that was they were some unbelievable amounts. Biggest regret, if there's any. Biggest regret. Um. Oh, like I said, I got tons of them. I can talk about them for days. And I think I'm at peace with them. Good stuff. My biggest regret... In terms of fighting. Yeah, <laughs> not the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> would have to be how I let my life spiral out of control after that first fight. I should have come back and stomped on him. But I came back, and I cut 18.8 pounds in the last 20 hours for our second fight. Yeah. I mean, I was bloated. and I, I By midnight after weigh-ins, I was 152.2. Shredded. Wow. wow. Just, Bloated and gross and unhappy and you know like one fifty two point two. Within so, how many hours is that? Eight or nine. Hours. Holy shit, man! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, match you didn't get to 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 take or to fight is there is there a match there that you would have loved to have had and that you didn't have? Man, I mean, with. Uh, there's a lot of fights I, I want. I mean, I, I do owe Neil Siri a fist fight. Realistically, I, mean, I owe that guy a, you know, a fist fight. So, you know, we never know. Maybe, maybe next time in Ireland, we'll get drunk and get in a fight with each other. Yeah, like we, <laughs> Neil does. Neil Neil does a podcast with us now on, on MMAfighting.com as well. Uh, myself and Peter Carroll. So it's good fun. Neil Neil's always in good form. <laughs> well, I said hello. He's a good. He's a good dude. He really is. He is definitely uh, Neil's. Neil's uh, a pioneer. Look, just like yourself of mixed martial arts, obviously you're uh, uh, an American sort of pioneer and, and flyway pioneer in the terms of uh, of the sport on a, a world level. But listen to me, it's always a pleasure. Listen, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with your career, your new career now. And I'd love to see you get in an analyst role. It'd be a great thing um, for the UFC to, to get you on board at some point. 
always a pleasure, my friend. Listen, hope everything works out well if you do appreciate it. Thank you very much, and I'm, I'm proud of you with this new show, man. Good job. Cheers, brother. I do appreciate it.